Dr. Trevor Williams. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon based out of West Jordan, Utah. Podiatrist by training. I've been in practice for almost 18 years now. So here we're going to demonstrate the technique for an Evans calcaneal osteotomy. Its indication is to help as a triplanar correction for forefoot abduction, forefoot varus, and uh, it does have a, an effect on the calcaneal position and stance as well. So this is one of the more powerful osteotomies to perform. So we're going to use this and use an MTF Evans allograft. So landmarks, lateral malleolus, fifth metatarsal, and then we're going to see this little declination angle right here in the calcaneus. There's your anterior process of your calcaneus. I tend to make just an oblique incision. Right here is the lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve. Right at the tip of that scalpel is going to be my perineus brevis tendon. So my goal is to come up above that and reflect that all down. That way I preserve them. So let's come in here and then just elevate that off. So again, you can see that coming into view. Right there is the perineus brevis. Okay, so here's one of the landmarks I'm going to look for. This is the anterior process of the calcaneus coming up. Perineus brevis right here at the bottom of that surgical field. And I've been able to insert this tenotomy scissor right here. That is going right at that inflection point in the calcaneus. I've got my posterior facet right here. It's going to angle and deflect up. That point invariably will be right about where you want to make your osteotomy. So now I've come underneath my calcaneus. Keeping in mind that calcaneus comes at an inclination angle and it narrows down so you can quite easily get over the top of those perineal tendons. We're going to aim for about a centimeter and a half proximal to the calcaneal cuboid joint. And what I usually do is have a, an assistant take a Holman retractor down below. You want to avoid a lot of plantar dissection through this area because you've got the long plantar ligament. Now we just simply take a cut. It's going to go from medial to lateral, perpendicular with the bone. And then I'll finish it off with an osteotome. So to show you this triplanar correction here, we'll simply take an ing retractor, stick it into the osteotomy and open it up. As I open it up, you can see how that pushes the forefoot over medially and how it will take the forefoot varus out. Now, obviously the more pronounced that deformity is in your patient, the more you'll see this. Some of the power of this as well is that as you lengthen that lateral column, the perineus longus is gonna be tensioned. And that's what helps to pull that medial column down, takes out that forefoot varus. Select your, your size of choice. This is based off of how it clinically looks, so put in your trial sizers. This is an eight. What I'm looking for is to see how that foot lines up. I can use radiographs to look at an AP of the foot and see how that tail and navicular coverage is. I can look at the tailored bisection, see how that's lined up with the first ray. And then also looking at the lateral column. When I see that lateral aspect of the calcaneus and the lateral aspect of the cuboid lining up, then I know I have the right size. So use whatever joint retractor that you prefer, and then we're going to simply drive in. And the reason this is helpful is that it will help you from fragmenting your graft when you stick it in. My preference is MTF. I just really think they've got the best track record in terms of graft harvesting. It's a trapezoidal graft, it is not a triangular graft. One of the advantages of doing it this way is that your perineal tendons run right across the side of that graft site. And if you have a very rough edge, in other words, if I'm to place it in like this, I have this rough edge here that sometimes abrades and bothers the perineal tendons. So in many instances, I will do this to open it up. I should be able to drop this in. We've sized this out for an eight millimeter graft. You don't want this thing to sit very proud and then use the tamp to put it in or you'll crush your graft. You want to have it pretty well set, and the tamp is just to simply help you get the final position. Boom, just like that. I can remove my retractor, and then my graft sets nice in there. Now, fixation-wise, this becomes a point kind of, I think, of controversy is do you need to fixate your grafts? And sometimes, yes. So if I want to fixate my graft, cap your K-wire, leave that protruded, remove it in about four to six weeks, and your graft won't move.